Ok, ciao a tutti. I want to talk to you about Italian coffee culture and how Italian coffee culture is different from American coffee culture. I grew up Italian American and this is one of those things that we never were introduced to drinking Italian coffee or uh, we didn't drink espresso. We grew up drinking American coffee. You either are a Dunkin' Donuts person or you or you drink Starbucks. And growing up on the East Coast, Dunkin' Donuts is like a mafia. So like literally you can drive three miles. No, not even three miles. You can drive two miles, see a Dunkin' Donuts and another mile, and there's another Dunkin' Donuts. It's it's insane. People are obsessed with Dunkin' Donuts. Now I live in Italy and people don't understand American coffee culture. Actually, for them, everything that's not Italian coffee is American coffee. In American coffee culture, there is the like fancy coffee houses that are a bit hip, maybe like hipster coffee culture. You go in, people are on the computers and relaxing, where in Italy, it's not quite like this, though these places do exist. The other side of American coffee culture is the you know morning coffee place like Dunkin' Donuts. You, you go in, you maybe grab a breakfast sandwich, and you drink coffees that literally would make an Italian vomit, honestly. <laughs> For example, in a Dunkin' Donuts cup of coffee is usually, you know, a medium, like that big. They would describe it as dirty water, uh, which might be a little insulting if you like Dunkin' Donuts. I never questioned Dunkin' Donuts or coffee houses in general until Starbucks came and Starbucks tried to present itself as this uh, sophisticated coffee from the west coast and basically if you tried to be a bit more sophisticated or like a yuppie you would go to Starbucks and try to pretend you're writing a story for a film or something, I don't know. While Dunkin' Donuts are a bit more working class. But both have try to adopt a little bit of the cultura italiana in their coffee culture. For example, they have names that are Italian names, like real Italian names, but describing things that are not Italian. So for example, ordering a latte. A latte is probably the biggest example I can use, which if you ask for a latte in Italy, you get a glass of milk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but there is cafe latte in Italy, which is a shot of espresso into a, a glass of milk. This is like what most Italians drink for breakfast. They have a little breakfast, maybe with like a cornetto or some toast and jam, and they have this with their with their cafe latte. Yeah, there are a lot of big differences. You know, like you go to Dunkin' Donuts and order a, a latte or a frappuccino. Like, there's no, I don't think there's anything in Italy called a frappuccino, to my knowledge. It just sounds made up. It's like they took the word cappuccino and then added something else to it. So, but maybe I'm wrong about that. But a cafe latte, completely different. <laughs> uh, yeah, for most orders you could get at Dunkin' Donuts, many of them are really big, like the size of my head, with cream and maybe caramel or just like, why not? <laughs> and it's basically diabetes in a plastic cup. So yeah, I'm probably sounding a little snobbish right now, but I've been living here for a few years, so I'm I'm used to their coffee culture and it's a, it's a lot different and I appreciate it now. Though I also appreciate American coffee culture and also American coffee. Okay, so if you're traveling to Italy, or I mean, the first thing that you might do is go into a bar. For an American, and maybe also for Canadians, a bar is, it's not a bar where you drink alcohol. Like you could get a beer or some alcohol, but it's mainly for coffee. For, but this is something that might shock you at first. So it, if you go to a bar, you might have a, a different opinion at first of what a bar is. If you travel in Italy and you, you know, obviously the flight's uh, very long and you maybe you really want a cup of coffee, don't expect to find an American sized coffee. If you have like a translation book and it says like, oh, this is how you order a cup of coffee in Italian, like, you might say, oh, I can do this. This is, this sounds pretty easy. You go into a, a cafe, bar or whatever, and you order a coffee. 
you say un caffè per favore and then what you get is a little tiny tazza with maybe a, one or two sips for an american this might be a bit disappointing because you might be tired and you really want your normal cup of coffee coffee culture in italy is a bit more fast paced in the mornings especially in bigger cities usually if you're going to work everyone's at the bar standing up drinking their coffee very loud very hectic it might be a little intimidating actually if you're not used to shoulder to shoulder interactions they, they do have a coffee culture where you sit down and relax of course um you might find this more one in small towns and villages yes this is quite normal but also in the cities like if you you want to meet out with a friend you go to the bar have a cup of coffee and you sit and talk just like a coffee house now if you go and order a cup of coffee after receiving your little tazza and say i'm going to try caffè americano this might be actually what the coffee i'm used to and you order caffè americano it's a shot of espresso with a glass of hot water it's there to dilute the coffee yeah this is what many italians think american coffee is because they don't know the machine that we use for our breakfast they might understand in movies they have the the carafe and you know the diners and people pour up coffee and all, often many italians travel when they go to new york or boston or miami they they have a a cup of coffee and it's usually the most diluted weak coffee from mcdonald's or dunkin donuts and for them it's also very startling <laughs> the differences but yeah if, if you don't like espresso try not to order a coffee try to be more specific but if you're looking for a dunkin donuts or starbucks coffee you're probably not going to find it you might need to go to a trendy place in rome or milan they might have something like this your best bet is uh, a cappuccino it's a bit bigger and more fulfilling and also it's more sugary so if you're into more sugary and you need a bigger coffee cappuccino but there is a rule if you drink cappuccino so americans if you're watching me don't be alarmed that italians can be very judgmental when it comes to food or drinking coffee or actually any sort of ingestion of anything <laughs> they're very very conservative food culture for them is how americans feel about the flag or george washington or something italians have garibaldi they have they have other famous heroes that they they're very proud about but often with historical figures they won't have an argument with you about them they will argue about how to make a certain dish but what really really annoys them is when they see famous chefs like gordon ramsay or even italian chefs or italian american chefs cook the food incorrectly the most famous example is gordon ramsay's carbonara just check it out for an american this is like what's the big deal <laughs> it's just his version of carbonara no you can't do this in italy this is not something that italians can even conceive you have one way of doing it and that's it so coffee is no different and one of the rules italians observe though They're not going to yell at you if you do this, but they might think it. If you drink cappuccino, and that is 11 o'clock in the morning, not at night. If you drink a, a cappuccino after 11, this is a big no-no in Italian culture. Because, one, Italians don't drink milk. Not really. For them, milk is a, is a beverage for children. And Americans drink milk. This is actually one of their big jokes, is that Americans drink milk. <laughs> and... Most Americans might be thinking, well, yeah, milk's, you know, that's what people drink. Italians generally don't drink milk. Because there is the cream in the cappuccino and it's getting closer to midday, this is something that is a, it's a bit heavy on the stomach. Milk is considered a meal, more or less. Italian breakfasts are very small. You know, for, for an American, you might have one or two cups of coffee. You might have your juice, bacon, eggs, maybe pancakes or French toast. For an Italian, even going beyond the uh, cookie or toast and jam, that's too much. It's too heavy. With that being said, well, where does Italian coffee culture come from? So there are many different varieties of coffee that you can find in Italy. I'm going to only share with you the most common varieties. So each variety depends on the amount of coffee or water and if It's served hot or in a cold cup. 
The three most consumed varieties of espresso are Café Ristretto, which is a very concentrated cup of espresso. Café Doppio, which is a double dose of espresso. Café Lungo is made by draining more water than usual. Next, we have Cappuccino, a slightly long espresso with 100 milliliters of frothed milk served in a large cup. Further, we have Café Macchiato, Macchiato meaning stained in Italian, it's a normal espresso in which you add cold milk. So that would be caffè macchiato freddo or hot milk, caffè macchiato caldo. Then there's a marocchino, which is made with milk foam, coffee, and a dark chocolate powder or chocolate syrup on top. There's caffè latte, which is a large cup of warm milk mixed with coffee. Then there's latte macchiato. That is a large cup of warm milk mixed with one espresso put on top. And there's a very, very delicious Café Chacarato. That's an espresso shaken with ice and sugar in a shaker and put in a martini glass. And then my favorite, Café Corretto. Café Corretto is an espresso made by adding a small amount of hard liquor. Coffee was not only the drink of choice for breakfast, but also for coffee houses. Coffee houses became a a staple throughout all of Europe. Just like in its origins, you had intellectuals, you had revolutionaries, and also people that you would not generally see in the local populations, like foreigners, traders, but also ethnic minorities and European Jewish populations. These would become the centers of revolutions, even the French Revolution. The most famous coffee house, and probably one of the oldest in Europe, is the Café Florian in Venice, in Piazza San Marco. Café Florian was actually established in the year 1720, and it's not only old, but quite famous even for that day. People like Charles Dickens and Goethe, Lord Byron and Casanova frequented this particular coffee house. It was actually the first coffee house to allow women, and there are many other famous coffee houses throughout Italy, one being the Café Greco in Rome, Pedrocchi in Padua, and San Carlo in Turin. But the most famous city for coffee in Italy is undoubtedly Naples. Naples is and has been famous for coffee for centuries. And their most famous coffee house is Gran Café Gambrinus. It was established in the year 1860, which had many notables also visiting like Oscar Wilde and Ernest Hemingway. There's also a tradition in Naples called the Café Sospezo. Sospezo is when you buy two cups of coffee out of an act of kindness. This act was something created by the working classes. If you bought two coffees, you only drank one. With one coffee you drank, it would, another coffee would be available for someone who was maybe down on their luck. This coffee would in turn be asked or inquired by these poor people. Is there a cafe suspeso available? Yes, you're in luck. Also famous with Napoli is their version of their coffee maker, which is in the Palitano called the Cucumella which is invented by a Frenchman. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but Maurice may be his name. But it was originally made of copper, with two pieces, the spout though being at the bottom pointing up. This was the most popular espresso machine in Italy until the mocha machine, which is in fact the most famous in Italy today. The mocha machine was invented by the man Renato Bialetti. Bialetti, he worked in a aluminum factory in France and when he returned to Italy in 1918, he started his own shop for aluminum goods. He got, he got the idea for the mocha machine after studying his wife's washing machine. Violetti realized that the same concept could be used to produce espresso. So he went to work in his aluminum shop. And before long, the mocha pot was born. So the downside to the mocha pot is that it's not exactly espresso, but most people think it is. It's thanks to the genius, the marketing genius of Renato Violetti and his son Alfonso. Alfonso came up with the cartoon and commercials that were so famous during the 1950s and 60s in Italy, which were literally a caricature of himself. I think the most interesting fact about both of them is that when they died, they both requested that their remains, their ashes, be put into mocha pots like you would urns. This has been very interesting for me. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you like watching my video, please hit the subscribe button. And also, you can visit my Facebook page. You can find it in the description below. 
So I hope you have a good week. I see you next time and arrivederci.